Can your lifestyle and diet cause cancer? Yes and no. Using the scientific definition of cause, no, but technically using science, in a way, yes, your lifestyle and diet can cause cancer. Now, if you're unfamiliar with scientific language, then this may seem like one big contradiction, but in reality, it isn't. You see, like anything in science, there is a lot of nuance and there is a lot of specificity. The definition of cause in science is one event being the result of the occurrence of another event. So if event A causes event B, then almost all Always will event A lead to event B. Now cancer by definition is a condition that's characterized by uncontrollable and invasive growths of cells in your body which have mutated. Now according to a lot of evidence in science, a person's lifestyle, so the lack of physical activity, an unhealthy diet, and the exposure to carcinogens, so smoking or occupational hazards, may result in more or specific mutations which may result in cancer occurring. And we know this based on in vitro, in vivo, and even epidemiological evidence analyzing human tumors which have found cause and effect relationships between various carcinogenic compounds that we are exposed to throughout our life and the occurrence of cancer-causing mutations which can lead to cancer. So if someone smokes, eats themselves into obesity, and never exercises, their lifestyle may increase the number of mutations or even cause the mutation which results in the cancer itself. And in this way, you can technically say that the person's lifestyle caused their cancer. However, despite all technicality, there is an issue with this consensus, at least scientifically. You see, in science, to prove a true cause and effect relationship, we need direct evidence, and unfortunately, in humans, random mutations which can cause cancer also occur on a daily basis regardless of a person's lifestyle. In other words, you could live the healthiest life known to man and still get cancer out of pure bad luck. So in order to scientifically prove a cause and effect relationship between lifestyle choices and the occurrence of cancer in humans, we need the ability to track mutations, when they occur and why they occur. And sadly, this type of mutation tracking technology just does not exist. So currently, we can only say that in humans, lifestyle increases risk of cancer but doesn't cause it, even if we have evidence of causal links. Now, unless we develop the technology to track mutations, we may never be able to truly scientifically claim that a person's lifestyle caused their cancer. But honestly, I hope we never find ways to track the exact cause of the mutation that caused a person's cancer, or at least I hope this technology is only used for diagnostic purposes, because I already smell the human trash cans blaming people for their cancer diagnosis. Overall, with all that being said, considering one in two men and one in three women will experience cancer at one point in their lifetime, and the existence of strong evidence linking lifestyle factors to cancer occurrence, you would be a fool for not taking this evidence into consideration and living a healthy life. Ultimately, before I go, why have I made this video? Well, I wanted to extrapolate on a very controversial statement I made in my last video. Because I was way too vague in saying there are plenty of studies which have found and proven cause and effect relationships between human nutrition and cancer. I should have specifically said that the cause and effect relationship that exists between human nutrition and cancer is specifically between human nutrition nutrition and the increased occurrence of mutations, which increase the occurrence of cancer in humans. Because there is strong evidence to suggest that there is some sort of a cause and effect relationship between carcinogenic lifestyle factors and the occurrence of cancer in humans. But I wanted to make sure I clarify that it wasn't a cause and effect relationship between human nutrition and a cancer diagnosis, but human nutrition and cancerous mutations. Ultimately, overall and in conclusion, I'm all about doing my absolute best to provide you with the correct information. If I don't do a good job at that, I'm going to correct myself and I'm going to clarify things. So if you like the video, like, comment, and subscribe, and comment down below for other topics you'd like me to talk about.